Hi, I'm Mark Hall with the Alabama Cooperative Extension System talking today about buying a, a used mid-sized tractor. And with me is Jeff Pig. Jeff was our National 4-H tractor driving champion and he spent his life being an equipment jockey. Jeff, tell us about buying a used mid-sized tractor. Well, I always tell them I don't make a living off of people that uh, buy what they, they need is what they want. And most of the time what they want is something just a little better than their neighbor has. But sometimes that ain't exactly what you, you need to shoot for. You need to find out what your need is going to be. Fill the need with a, with a piece of equipment that, uh, that fits what you're going to be using it for. Uh, if you're going to be pulling a, a bat wing cutter, you're going to be pulling a, a, a cutter of some kind, you're going to be row cropping, or you're going to be uh, baling hay or something like that. Make sure that you make the need fit the equipment you're buying. As far as the, the size, you need to decide what you're going to be pulling to start with. Uh, for instance, if you're going to pull a, a, a six foot or a seven foot three point hitch type tractor, uh, you can go online, you can go into your dealer, you can find out what horsepower it requires. If you're going to pull a bat wing, it requires a different size tractor. Uh, you need to decide what is the, the maximum item you'll be pulling and match the tractor to fit it. Now, a lot of people uh, will decide uh, as far as pure economics. You can buy a lot of extra horsepower, sometimes cheaper than you can buy what you need, but you've got a lot more expense hanging out there. It costs more in fuel, it costs more in upkeep. Make sure that you set up whatever you're buying for what you need, not excessive. After you want to decide the size track that you'll need, the horsepower you need, uh, there are a lot of good uh, resources on the, the web that you can go to, such as www.tractordata.com. Other websites, you can Google it. Uh, it gives the, the weight, uh, the horsepower, uh, the reserve, and, and a lot of different things about it. You can go online and find out a lot of these things. Uh, one of the things you need to keep in mind about weight especially uh, if you're going to have to be moving it long distances, are you going to have the equipment to, to, to move it? Are you going to have to buy a lot of extra equipment? So you need to find out about your horsepower and your weight. Uh, that's the first thing you need to do when you start talking about buying a, a used piece of equipment. That's even before you start budgeting. Mark, once you, you decide what your need is and you plan a budget, then it's time to think about the conditioning, um, the hours, uh, the condition of the engine, uh, hydraulics and, and things like that. Uh, hours don't mean as much as it used to. Uh, like we were talking about earlier, uh, used to when we were, were young, if we had a, a vehicle that had 100,000 miles on it, it wore out. And we know yeah. it's not the case anymore. Uh, same way with tractors. Uh, you know, we're seeing a lot of these tractors run 15,000 hours without any major uh, problems. Uh, but uh, you, you, hours are a, a condition. Uh, the less hours, of course, the more it's worth. Uh, but uh, you don't pay as much attention to the hours as, as, as we used to. If you are uh, going somewhere and, and looking at a piece of equipment, a, a tractor like this, some things to kind of watch for. The late model tractors uh, have got so much electronics on them. First thing you need to do is, is check the fluids, check the oil, uh, pull your dipstick. See how black it is? That's the way it should be. Uh, if it has a gray or a white tint to it, it means there's contamination in it. Water, you don't need that. Um, check the oil levels. Hydraulic, uh, you need to check the hydraulics. Uh, hydraulic sh oil should be clear and uh, not cloudy. A lot of the tractors have dipsticks. The new ones have side glasses uh, for the hydraulics. All, uh, all the hydraulics are, are checked through that one side glass. You can walk up to it and look at it, uh, make sure it's in the right level. Uh, another thing, when you're starting to uh, decide what kind of track you need, uh, you need to know how many hydraulics you're going to need to run. Hay balers, for instance, uh, most of them now, uh, if they're hydraulic tie, you've got to have at least two sets. When I say two yeah. sets, one set is, is, is a pair. Yes. This one's got three sets, one, two, three. Um, most everything now, everybody wants at least two sets. Three is, a, three is nice. One, this tractor here has got one set, uh, and you know, sometimes you need more than one set. Even though uh, this one is loader compatible, it's got the joystick with two extra valves, this one has got the loader valve, but only out the back, it's only got one set of remotes. Another thing too, um, some tractors are, uh, you, you need to make sure that, uh, that you've got 
if you if you're in a small end of there, you want to make sure it is a 540 PTO. What's that? All right, uh, the big spline 540, the six yeah. spline. The bigger tractors have 1,000 PTO shafts, and you can't use them with small implements. See, this tractor has actually got reversible. You can you can change the, the end around, and it changes the speed. But you want to make sure that it is a 540. I didn't know that. Well, and uh, we've had people that didn't know that and bought something that they couldn't use. Ooh. Yeah. This is the 1,000 PTO shafts flying here. Uh, in the reversible, if you, plug, if you plug it in where this one is, uh, is out, it changes the gear and it is turning at 2,200 RPMs, this is turning 1,000 RPMs. If you turn it around, the 540 sticks out, same hole and everything, it changes the gear and this turns 540 RPMs. And this is what you need more than in smaller tractors. Yeah. You need to make sure you have access, if it's not reversible, uh, you need 540. Very few things in the, the 100 horsepower range uses a thousand spline, uh, other than some bat wings and things like that. All hay balers, conditioners, mowers, well, you have to have the 540. You don't in the bigger tractors, some of them don't even offer the 540, it's only the thousand. So it means you're in trouble. This tractor has only one set of remotes out the rear. And there's applications, uh, especially, just say you want to run a bat wing. You actually need yeah. two sets. Uh, there's things that can be done to, to, to change it, but it costs money. You just, that's the thing you need to, you need to decide what you need before you start buying this thing about it. This tractor will be a 540 only. It will not have a, a 1000 shaft, which yeah. that's fine for, for the small stuff. But uh, you need to know what, you, what you're needing. The next thing to do is um, get inside, start it up, make sure there's no what we call idiot lights coming on. That can be very expensive. We're talking about electronics. I can tell you, it's a, a BCU. That's an electronic uh, computer for one of these tractors. Uh, if those give trouble, they can be $1,000 or more. Most tractors have three different ones. That's only one. That's a basic control unit. You have an engine control unit and uh, some other computers, several of them, several different ones. Make sure everything works. Uh, air conditioning is, a, if you're in a cab, is a very important thing. Uh, and that sounds superficial, but uh, it's not. Another thing is uh, real expensive now. Uh, if you bought any like this, tires. Uh, tires can get into to a lot of expense there. Boy, look at the tires here versus here. Boy, that's a that's going to be a lot of price difference in it. These are a thousand dollars a piece. Those are six hundred. So we're talking about thirty-two hundred dollars to reshoe this this animal. You know, but buy from somebody reputable. Uh, we're selling more people tractors sight unseen. That puts a lot more pressure on us. We want. To their customer will be happy. Uh, uh, our ideal is to sell multiple things to people. We, we're selling, you know, I sold a person the third tractor yesterday. If I'd have messed him up, he wouldn't have bought the third one. And, and that's what we want to do. We don't want anyone to get something that they don't like. But, but deal with somebody that's reputable, that, that, that you know that the hours are going to be correct. Uh, in your buying a used tractor, is, you know you're not going to be warranted, but make sure that that they, they that they're going to give you what you buy. And we're seeing more and more of that as as, as our our demographics uh, extend further and further away. Uh, more and more people are buying them and never seeing them. But uh, there's some good questions you can ask and make sure everything will be okay. When we care, we'll bring one in. We have a checklist. We check the hydraulic pressures. We check the PTOs, we check the air conditioners. If it's four wheel drive, make sure the four wheel drive engages and disengages like it should. Uh, we check the fluid levels. Um, most time uh, we, we bring them in, check for contaminants in the uh, hydraulics and things like that. So there's a lot of things that can be done, but you need to, you need to, you need to deal with somebody that you, can, you know, that you can believe in. But the factor of, of uh, a new versus a used, uh, that's kind of a, it's kind of a loaded question because there's a lot of variables. First of all, uh, a piece of farm equipment, especially a tractor, is not like a car. It don't devalue like a, uh, a car does. 
For instance, one of our best-selling tractors that we handle as used, I started handling them about 15 years ago with very few hours. I'm selling the same tractor 15 years later with a lot of hours for approximately the same price as I was selling it 15 years ago. Uh, and that's one thing to take in consideration when you start to buy a tractor. Think of what will hold its value. Uh, there are certain, certain brands will hold their value much better than, uh, than other brands. Uh, they might cost you more initially, but um, if you take care of them and use them correctly, you're down the road, it's not gonna cost you much. Some of them will cost you an awful lot. Uh, some brands will just not hold their value as well. There are a lot of information available if, and once you decide what you're looking for. Um, if you'll just go online, uh, Google tractors for sale, probably uh, not, uh, not advertising for them. Probably the, the, the first thing that, that will pop up is a, is a company we deal with, it's Tractor House. Uh, you can go online, you can see thousands sometime of, uh, of tractors like you may be looking for. You can compare pricing. Uh, you can see if, uh, if it's in line price-wise. Uh, the internet has changed everything. Uh, our demographics have changed so much in the past several years. Used to, uh, you know, we were selling local. And we, our average sale is probably three to 400 miles from here now. So things have changed a whole lot. The internet's changed everything, just like it has in all aspects of life. But it's good because you have a lot of uh, free information there that you can uh, access at the drop of a hat. And it's all there, it's all available, and, uh, and use it. Find out if you're getting a good deal. If you're not getting a good deal, go somewhere else.